بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ کنٹینیوئنگ دی پراپرٹیز آف آف واٹ دی فور ایئر ٹرانسفارم آؤٹ آف وچ نا آئی بلیو دس ون از دی ایٹتھ پراپرٹی یس اٹ از سو ایٹتھ پراپرٹی آئی ڈسکس از دی کنولوشن ان ٹائم ڈومین کنولوشن and 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 what do i mean by convolution i mean is that if one signal that is x1 of t has fourier transform of x1 of j omega x2 is another signal having fourier transform x2 of j omega what if i convolve these two signals in the time domain which means if x1 of t is convolved with x2 of t what would be the resulting fourier transform the resulting fourier transform would be the multiplication of the individual fourier transform yes it would be x1 of j omega simply multiplied to x2 of j omega this is what it is fine let's say we prove it now okay so for the proof what do you have is considering the 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 fourier transform equation so my x of j omega and let's say this is the x dash of j omega and this is equal to the the uh, negative infinity to positive infinity okay put it here please thank you x of j omega would be equal to a negative infinity to positive infinity x of t is this one so let me name this as x of t the convolution right so this would be my x of t into exponential of negative j omega t dt so let's say i have negative infinity to positive infinity x of t would be what it is x1 of t convolved with x2 of t so let the convolution be with the green color and the rest is exponential of negative j omega t and dt now we know what let the convolution be with the green color so again we have a negative infinity to positive infinity fine so x1 and x2 convolution would be like this negative infinity to positive infinity x1 of tau x2 of t minus tau d tau and you have an exponential of negative j omega t dt is that clear till here it should be fine now uh, let uh, you know t minus tau to be another variable lambda this variable let t minus tau is equal to some variable lambda such that then dt is equal to d lambda isn't it yes dt would be equal to d lambda why because tau is a constant value so that would be uh, the derivative would be zero and this would also imply that t is equal to lambda plus tau t is also lambda plus tau so i back put all these values in the previous equation fine and 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 what do i have x dash of j omega would equal negative infinity to positive infinity x1 of uh tau x1 of tau right then you have an x2 of lambda and then you have what uh, x2 of lambda into d tau right and then you in the exponential function you have an exponential of negative j omega and then for t you have a lambda plus tau so you have a lambda over here exponential of negative j omega tau over here i have split the integration and then you have a dt and isn't that fine it is now uh, if you see now if you c where now this would be d lambda now dt is equal to d lambda so now have a look this is going to be the final step and i have missed one integration as well so we have the green color integration over here also 
this integration is over here also negative infinity to positive infinity isn't it like this it is so now if i split the integrations let's say i have a to i change the integration order negative infinity to positive infinity if i have x1 of tau yes i take x1 of tau first multiply it with the exponential of negative j tau and the integration is with respect to d tau so i've taken this as well fine and then what remains is x2 of lambda remains and this exponential of lambda and d lambda this remains so these are with one and the second one. so what would i have i would have an x2 of lambda exponential of negative j omega lambda and d lambda have a look the independent variable does not matter the independent variable does not matter this is the fourier transform of x1 of tau x1 of tau is an independent variable so this is the fourier transform of x1 this is the fourier transform of x2 the overall fourier transform which was this one x dash of j omega was this one so which means x dash of j omega is the product of x1 of j omega and x2 of j omega and this is the convolution in time property the eighth property is done from here you can have the LTI system point of view as well and what is that that is that if you have a system x of t you give it to an LTI system you get the output y of t now we know the output y of t would be the convolution of the signal x of t with the impulse response h of t of the signal now if you need to find y of j omega so this from here you could simply stay on the basis of this proof that y of j omega would be equal to simply x of j omega multiplied with h of j omega and you can prove this property by this method as well fine and how do you take how do you do this so you take y of j omega and in place of x of t you put the, the this convolution and again the integration and this and that and you can prove this yourself that is the eighth property the ninth is the multiplication in time and where is the multiplication property with me okay so i have it over here okay so multiplication stay say uh, says what if x1 has fourier transform uh, x1 of j omega consider the same x2 has fourier transform x2 of j omega what if x1 is multiplied with x2 in the time domain x1 of t multiplied to x2 in the time domain the resulting fourier transform would be what it would be a 1 over 2 pi a scaling factor with x1 of j omega convolved with x2 of j omega should this proof be the homework what do you think no i will do it myself no problem so what do i have is this was the multiplication property let's say i do it in an opposite manner i do it in a different manner okay we know that the fourier transform of x1 of t multiplied x2 of t this is equal to this thing isn't it like this it is so does this not imply does this not imply that x1 of t multiplied x2 of t would be equal to the inverse fourier transform of this 1 over 2 pi x1 j omega convolve x2 j omega does it not imply this it will so now we would take this inverse Fourier transform of this Fourier transform and if we prove it equal to x1 of t multiply x2 of t we, we would have the right answer this would be the right answer and how do we prove it so I would do it with you guys fine so 
the, uh, the, the inverse Fourier transform formula and you imply it over there. The formula for inverse Fourier transform implies what? Let's say I am getting x of t if this is x of t. Let's say x of t is equal to so the inverse Fourier transform is that so 1 upon 2 pi and what do you have negative infinity to positive infinity and you substitute the x of j omega over here so what would that be it would be a 1 over 2 pi into x1 of j omega convolved x2 of j omega and then you have an exponential of j omega t the integration is with respect to omega is that fine till here it is now say not including j for simplicity let's say we change the independent variables so what do i do is i have a 1 upon 2 pi outside i have a negative infinity to positive infinity and let's say I take this 1 upon 2 pi outside as well. So I have a 1 upon 2 pi whole squared, right? And then the convolution would be what? The convolution could be something like this, the convolution. So this is the, the, the very own uh, of, from the formula. This one, right? This integration. And then for convolution, what would I have? I would have a negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's say I have x1 of lambda. And, and then it's multiplied with an x2 of omega minus lambda. So this is the convolution formula and I'm, I'm just replacing the variables. So this was for convolution and now you have this exponential of j omega t d omega. And one step I need to do is I need to multiply an exponential of uh, j lambda t i need to multiply and divide exponential of j lambda t so you put it over here exponential of j lambda t exponential of j lambda t you will know why it i have, have i done it like this let's say again we have omega minus lambda over here omega minus lambda is replaced by another variable beta omega minus lambda is beta so the derivative of omega would be equal to the derivative of beta because lambda is a constant it would be zero so which means what when omega approaches negative infinity beta would also approach negative infinity when omega approaches positive infinity lambda would also uh, this whatever other variable the limits of integration would remain the same so let's say i do it now so x of t this inverse fourier transform of x of j omega let's say i'm getting x of t so x of t is equal to what i have uh, let's say i take 1 upon 2 pi 1 upon 2 pi 1 1 upon 2 pi integration negative infinity to positive infinity x1 of lambda x1 of lambda here it is x1 of lambda this i have taken then you have an exponential of j lambda t exponential of j lambda t the black color isn't it like this and then you have a d lambda so so i also have a over here i also have a d lambda right with the integration so this d lambda i have taken is that fine it is now you have another one over 2 pi over here you have another limit of integration over here you have an x2 of omega minus lambda is beta omega minus lambda is beta fine then you have exponential of a negative j lambda t you have this thing exponential of j omega t and you have exponential of negative j lambda t 
so you can take you know uh, omega minus lambda this would come out to be right omega minus lambda into d so you could take an o uh, it with respect to beta so an know exponential of j beta t this would only come out to be exponential of j beta t isn't it like this and this would now d omega is equal to d beta so this would be d beta and is that fine so have a look have a look what do you have over here is this not the signal x1 of t for which the fourier transform is x1 of lambda the independent variable does not matter is this not the signal x2 of t for which the fourier transform is x2 of beta the independent variable beta does not matter so can i not write can i not write that my x of t is equal to x1 of sorry uh, this i am dealing with the inverse fourier transform so x of t is equal to x1 of t multiplied x2 of t and have i not proved this from the inverse fourier transform formula i have so that is all about the multiplication property as well fine so we are left with uh, with a few now uh, the significance of multiplication property let me tell you this is also called the modulation property so the main significance is the modulation and when do you do this modulation you do it when you have to shift the frequency you have to change the frequency of one signal so if x1 is the information signal or the message signal x2 is the carrier signal and this and that and this you know very well from your communication systems course and um, i will not touch that part of it because then it would uh, uh, get boring over here communication system is not my scope over here inshallah one day we will be seeing this in the communication systems course on my channel so anyway this is your communication system uh, important property fine okay okay let it go let it go the next the tenth property the tenth property is your differentiation and we see both the differentiation both in the time domain and in the frequency domain so the first is let's say in the time domain x of t has Fourier transform x of j omega so what if I take the derivative so if I take the derivative of x of t the, 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 the corresponding Fourier transform we will have j omega multiplied j omega multiplied with x of j omega okay let's prove this now let's prove this now so you have x of t equal to that particular thing the inverse Fourier transform yes we have let's say i take the, the the inverse fourier transform relation and that implies that my x of t is equal to what my x of t is equal to 1 upon 2 pi 1 over 2 pi uh, then you have a, a negative infinity to positive infinity x of j omega exponential of j omega t d omega right now if you take the derivative of x of t so if you have the derivative of x of t so of course 1 over 2 pi is common it would constant it would get outside the integration then you have the negative infinity to positive infinity right x of j omega is nothing to do with respect to time the only thing that is is what it's exponential of j omega t so if you are uh, taking the derivative with respect to t j omega would get multiplied over here and then you would have what you would have the same thing again exponential of j omega t again and this is d omega now have a look you can take this j omega outside of the integration and this is what you get the proof is that's all about the proof 
Yes, take it outside the integration. And this is the Fourier transform x of g omega for the derivative of it. If you have the nth order derivative, nth order derivative, over here you multiply it to the power n as well. And that is it. This was the derivative in the frequency domain. Now in the, in, sorry, in the time domain. What about the frequency domain? So, uh, should I write it over here? Yes, I can write it over here. The B, the part B is for the frequency domain. Now, what would we have? If the, we take the derivative, d d omega, with respect to omega, right? Of x of j omega, what would happen to the signal? What would happen to the signal? x of t, it would get multiplied by a t. And you know, this would, the, the, this would also get multiplied with a j. And this, we, 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 we are proving it now. We are proving it now. So you have x of j omega, that equation, right? Fourier transform equation. You, you differentiate it with respect to omega, okay? Fourier transform equation, you differentiate it with respect to omega. This implies what? That the differentiation with respect to omega uh, d d omega of x of j omega this would equal negative infinity to positive infinity uh, then you know x of t would be as it is x of t and then when you differentiate that with respect to omega so you have a negative j t where is it yes you have a negative j t coming down negative j t coming down and then you have negative j omega t is again over here fine and then you have d t as it is now what would you do now what would you do so if i take the negative j outside of the integration if i take negative j outside of the integration Then what do I have negative infinity to positive t times x of t. t times x of t and exponential of negative j omega t dt. Negative j is 1 over j. Negative j is 1 over j. And if I multiply it to the other side, so does this not mean that can I write it, can I write it like this? J is taken to the other side, J. Take the derivative with respect to omega of X of J omega. This is equal to the integration negative V to positive T times X of D exponential of negative J omega T with respect to T. So can you not see that this t times x of t, this is the signal. It is and this j times the derivative of x of j omega, this is the Fourier transform. This one is the Fourier transform. And that is simple as it is and this has been proved. For the nth order derivative, for nth order derivative, what do you have? You have t to the power n over here and you have a j to the power n over there as well. j to the power n over here as well and this is the differentiation in the frequency domain. Okay. So we are only left with integration and Parseval's relation. Okay, so first let me rub the board. Okay, the next property, the property number 11 is the integration property. Integration. Okay. Now again, uh, so we see is that, and, and I need this, so I, therefore I have not removed this. 
We've seen uh, that if x of t is a signal having the corresponding Fourier transform x of g omega, now if I integrate a signal from negative infinity, let's say t, I replace the independent by tau, d tau, what would be the Fourier transform now? So the corresponding Fourier transform would be x of j omega. And over here in the derivative, you see you have divide, multiplied with by j omega. So in the integration, you would definitely be thinking only to divided by j omega. But this is not the case. This is not the case. We have another term over here. And what is that term? That is pi x of 0 delta omega plus pi x of 0 delta of omega. Where do you think has it come from? Yes, it has come from the constant term. With each integral, we have an associated constant. And that is where this comes into play. This is an effect of the effect of the constant term or the average value or the DC term. Effect of, of constant. Or you can say DC or average or whatever it is. In the derivative, we don't have a constant term. In the integration, we have an associated constant term. We are going to prove this, con this property as well. The constant, you know it very well. I do not need to go into the mathematics basis. Fine? Yes. And, and you also know that uh, if you have a constant value, let me write over here. If you have any constant, Let's say I name it a naught. The corresponding Fourier coefficient is what? It is a 2 pi a naught times 2 pi a naught times delta of omega. And we've seen this in the example video most probably. Yes or no? You can prove it. If I No, I'm not going to prove it over here. I think we have seen it in the examples video. If not, so I will cover it in the examples video. Okay, you may see it in the upcoming videos. Anyways, if I prove it over here, it is going to waste our time in, for this video. The, the corresponding Fourier uh, transform for a constant term A0 is this thing. For now, you know it. Or maybe uh, we've seen it in the last video. First of all, you know, excuse the light over here. I've seen that some light is being reflected from here because I've got some extra lightning because this is the night time. Uh, in, the, in the morning, the, the light disturbed me very much going and coming, going and coming. Then I had to go somewhere. So the early portion I've recorded in the morning and now the rest I'm recording late at night. Fine. So anyway, just... I believe this x of t would not be visible, but you know this is the inverse Fourier transform formula. Anyways, let's come to the proof of this. Say we, we take it into the frame of LTI systems again. So if I have my input x of t, it's given to the, the LTI system. And in the output, let's say it is integrating my input now what I need is what do I need I need the Fourier transform of the integration right which means I need y of j omega so I need y of j omega if the and 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 we also know that for an LTI system, the output would be the convolution of the input and the impulse response. Yes, we know this, that this would, y of t would be equal to the convolution of the input and its impulse response. Now, what is the impulse response h of t of this system? Yes? Yes. So uh, let me tell you when we uh, when, when when our teacher asked it in our class what would be the impulse response of this system. So so one of our friends said that we have forgotten. So then the teacher said, How can you forget if forget if this relation is in front of you? Just have a look at this relation. The input output relation is given. What is impulse response? With the output of the system when the input is an impulse. If you give it an impulse, when you integrate an impulse from negative infinity somewhere, what do you get? You get a unit step signal. So which means that the impulse response h of t of this system is a unit step signal. So y of j omega is unknown. 
I could write over here that my y of t is equal to my input x of t convolved with the unit step signal u of t. Isn't it like this? And we have seen in the previous convolution property that, that my y of t in this case, the corresponding Fourier transforms would be equal to the corresponding y of j omega y of j omega would be equal to the multiplication of both the Fourier transforms which means it would be x of j omega multiplied with u of j omega. Now depending on x of t we can have any corresponding uh, x of j omega but what we need to do is we need to find the value of u of j omega. This is something of our importance. So now come back, leave it over here, leave it till here. We know y of j omega is x of j omega into u of j omega, leave it till here. x of j omega, let it go. u of j omega, what do we do? So u of j omega is for a unit step signal and how is a unit step signal? It's something like this. Fine. Let's say I name it as x of t. No, not x of t, let, let it be u of t. Let it be u of t. If I take the derivative of I directly, directly we will be seeing it in the examples video as well. Maybe we have seen it, but I don't think we have seen the examples. You, if you do it directly by this formula, you will not get your answer. And I told you in the beginning video that if you do not get your answer by this video of the Fourier transform, this does not mean that the Fourier transform does not exist. Try it yourself, try it for now. For now, try this unit step signal using the Fourier transform formula. You will not get an answer, you will, you will be stuck, you will get a, a, an undefined value. We will see it in the examples how to do such sort of examples. For now, we know the basic properties, I am doing it through properties. I take the derivative of it. What is the derivative? The derivative of the unit step signal is an impulse. The derivative of unit step signal is an impulse. We know this. Which means how can I write it? Where is it? Let me check. I can write it as that the derivative of the impulse has a correspond and, and we know and we know the corresponding Fourier transform of an impulse. We know that the transform of an impulse signal, the Fourier transform of an impulse signal is a constant value 1. So over here I could write what? I could write that the derivative of, uh, of, of u of t, sorry, this, the derivative of u of t which is an impulse has a, f uh, has, a, has a frequency response, has a Fourier transform equal to 1. Is it fine till here? But have a look, I do not need it of the derivative, I need it only of u of t. So for the derivative of x of t, what do you have for the Fourier transform? The Fourier transform of the original signal which means u of t has to be multiplied with j omega. So which means that this is now j omega multiplied u of j omega and this is equal to 1 and what does this imply? This imply that u of j omega is equal to 1 upon j omega and I believe this is clear till here. And did I do it correct? I have done it correct till here but again now we need to do what? We need to have the effect of the DC value or the average value. So the effect of the DC value comes from here, from the constant value. So 2 pi A naught plus, you plus over here 2 pi A naught. A naught is the DC value of the step signal. So you know at the point of discontinuity, what would be the uh, average value of the step signal before the discontinuity after the discontinuity divided by 2 which means 0 plus 1 divided by 2 1 upon 2 1 upon 2 delta of omega this is the average value of u of t is 1 over 2 average of u of t and this is the overall effect of 
the average value. Okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? The next step is, uh, of course, solving this. So, so what have I got? Let me write it over here. My u of j omega that I needed, I have got it to be pi times delta of omega. No, 1 over j omega also. 1 over j omega plus pi times delta of omega. Now my y of j omega, so this implies I have my y of j omega. My y of j omega would come out to be x of j omega multiplied this thing. So multiplied 1 over j omega plus pi times delta of omega. Get it inside. x of j omega divided by j omega plus x of j omega into pi times delta of omega, pi times delta of omega. And you know very well from the property of the impulse signal, when an impulse is multiplied with any signal, the, val the answer is equal to, it basically samples it at that value uh, where the impulse is located. So over here, which means delta, uh, delta impulse is located at omega equal to zero. So what can I write? What can I write is finally, finally my y of j omega would come out to be what? This thing x of j omega divided by j omega and then you have plus pi would come outside and the uh, x of x of 0 delta of omega and, and have we not proved this? We have proved the integration property as well. If you have any confusing point over here, let me revise it. U of j omega was unknown u, you got it till there. U of d will have a corresponding u of j omega. U of, t, u of j omega we cannot calculate directly by the formula. I took the derivative of u of t. So derivative of u of t is in impulse and impulse signal has Fourier transform equal to 1. This we have seen definitely in the previous video. Which means now the derivative of u of t transform is 1. But we do not need the derivative of u of d. We need directly u of t which means we directly need the u of j omega. So what do you have is from from the derivative property u derivative of u of t which means u of t would come out j of omega would come outside and u of t would be displaced by x of j omega the corresponding what would be one and the rest is mathematics you know it very well that is it that is it about the basic properties let me have the parseval's relation as well so now i can uh, you know remove this yes so 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 now i have the the 12th number is the parseval relation parseval's relation and what does the parseval relation say the energy in a signal can be related to the energy in its fourier transform and how do we do that we have a negative infinity to positive infinity the absolute of x of t whole square dt this is equal to what this is equal to 1 upon 2 pi and the integration negative infinity to positive infinity x of j omega whole squared d omega. This is not a w, okay, I have written it wrong, but let me, you know, correct it. This is d omega. This is what the Parseval relation says. Can you prove it by yourself or not? So anyways, let me prove it for you guys. So considering the left hand side, if I consider the left hand side, which means negative infinity to positive infinity, I have the absolute of x of t whole squared with respect to t. Now we've already seen, I, I told you through an example as well, that the absolute is basically equal to x of t multiplied with x conjugate of t. And, and this integration is with respect to t and isn't it like this yes it is now x conjugate of t you know it very well so we put it over here so now i have a, 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 a negative infinity to positive infinity i have my x of t and then for x conjugate of t what do i have i put the values over here so which means what yes uh, which means x conjugate of t uh, is from there 1 upon 2 pi the integration from negative infinity to positive infinity x of j omega exponential of 
negative j omega t and this x will also have a conjugate right yes and this would be with respect to omega fine and the and the final dt we would write over here is that okay till here it is now what do i do is i change the order of uh, order of these integrations which mean i do what 1 upon 2 pi is first of all taken outside fine then i have and let me take my copy so that i could hurry up uh, and then i have a negative infinity to positive infinity x conjugate of j omega okay and then we have another bracket in which i put the negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of negative j omega t dt fine and this and only the d omega remains so what do you think is it is this not x of j omega it is right so can i not write like this 1 upon 2 pi integration negative infinity to positive x conjugate of j omega into x of j omega right and the d omega as itself like this isn't this like this and you know it very well you know it very well again x conjugate of j omega into x of j omega would give you the x absolute square so this would be equal to 1 upon 2 pi negative infinity to positive infinity x of j omega whole is squared with respect to omega and this is what we have proved i'm a little tired i'm sorry if i'm not delivering at a hundred percent but no problem i they i have just i have just finished them Anyway, we have, uh, you know, two more, two more. And what are the two more? They are simpler ones. Area under x of t. Let me take 13th property is area under x of t. Fine. So, how do you calculate the area? So, so you integrate the signal, right? Area is equal to negative infinity to positive infinity or what? Yes infinity x of t and this integration is with respect to t right now also x of j omega is something like that also x of j omega is equal to negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of negative j omega t dt now to make some sort of this area from this if i put omega equal to zero if I put omega equal to 0, so would it not imply that x of 0 is equal to negative infinity to positive infinity x of t dt. So have a look. Have I not got the same relation? So can I not say that the area under the curve x of t is the Fourier transform at omega equal to 0? So area under x of t is... Uh, I would uh, if I write it over here area of x of t is equal to the Fourier transform x of j omega at omega equal to 0 fine and similarly if the last property is area under x of j omega so what would be that case again if you have to calculate the area so that would be a negative infinity to positive infinity x of j omega with respect to omega right so what do you have also my x of t is what 1 upon 2 pi negative infinity to positive infinity x of j omega exponential of j omega t dt so if I need to make this relation from this relation, what do I need to do? I need to put t equal to 0, right? So t equal to 0. And this implies what? That x of 0 is equal to 1 upon 2 pi. 1 upon 2 pi. And uh, the integration. The integration. That is negative infinity to positive x of j omega d omega so have a look isn't this the area isn't this the area 
So area under x of j omega is this one. Area is this one. So you have to multiply this with this. So I will write it over here. That area under x of j omega is basically equal to 2 pi times the value of x of t at t equal to 0 and that is it that is finally it for these videos for these properties a very long day a tough day for me i hope you have had a good day anyways that's all for this lecture that's all about the properties see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah maybe with a new topic till then take care of yourself and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye